and welcome to pattern recognition number 11 it's finally here many of you have been uh, asking me for a new pattern recognition video and here it is the entombed bishop so yeah this is number 11 e the last time I did these well I had another computer so I don't have these uh, graphics fire the laser okay so I didn't have the graphics that I used to have but uh, we'll just make it work <laughs> just threw something together but it's the chest that matters and yes we're going to learn about uh, a, strat a strategical pattern uh, which settles uh, white with a pretty pretty bad bishop so here is sort of the skeleton of the pattern we like to do that sort of you know narrow the pattern down and in this game uh, white has fianchero his bishop here on g2 but at some stage he uh, has allowed black to take here on e3 and this means that we have this doubled pawn on the e-file and this is actually a pretty dire situation for for uh, for white black to move here will play h5 and after that move it becomes apparent that the bishop on g2 it's trapped it's entombed it can't get out so this pawn is stopping the bishop from coming here uh, we can't relocate it through f1 because the pawn is in the way if we go to h3 this pawn is in the way and actually we can reinforce with with g6 as indicated by the arrow here this pawn right here can move here to even fortify this pawn chain a little bit more so what will happen in such, a, in such a situation, and this is why I included pawns on the queen side, is that white will be a piece down. So black will be able to simply win the end game by bringing his king over to the queen side and winning there with his extra piece. So okay, but what if white tries to uh, break out with his, uh, with his pawns, let's say h3? We will just fortify uh, the pawn chain. And after g4, we do have a very strong move, but we can also play h takes g4. And I want to do that just to demonstrate. Pawn takes. We bring our king. And like we said, this is still stuck because of the pawn on f5. So we have to have the pawn uh, protected. That's a key, the key to this to this pattern. Once again, the bishop can't get out here. So maybe it can try to come here. That's what we try here. Bishop to h3. But since we have the f5 pawn completely covered, there's no way for this bishop to access the h5 square or this diagonal so it can't improve so let's say we take take the bishop can't reach this diagonal and get out so if we try to bring our king we can play king g5 and block it in this is actually a version that white might be able to hold but black has some winning chances but in such an end game uh, a much stronger move after white goes g4 here is to play h4 and this will block the g3 square and it means that this king is not reaching any key squares here and this bishop remains blocked in and tombed in his yeah in his grave so the plan that we mentioned earlier we would simply march the king over to the queen side and win with our extra bishop helping helping us on the queen side let's make it green because it's good so that's the basic skeleton now let's look at some uh, examples of this pattern in action In this example, we're going to look at it uh, from Black's uh, point of view, from Black's perspe perspective. And yeah, the uh, Black pieces were controlled by former world champion Alexander Alekhine. And he played a move here that is very tricky for, for White to meet. It's actually a nice tactic, the way we reach our pattern. And if you want to pause it and you know think about what you would uh, play here, encourage you to pause the video and find the move it's like a I would say more than a, it's like intermediate or 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 higher uh, this tactic 
but I will not show you. So uh, pause it now if you <laughs> uh, if you wanted to solve it. But the solution is bishop takes d3, and turns out you kind of have to take with a pawn because if you take with the queen, there's a very nice tactic here. Queen takes and d3, hitting the bishop and hitting the queen. And you can't protect both at the same time. And if we trade queens, you are in a world of hurt because I'm attacking two pieces. You're going to lose material. Other ways to try and get out of this are to uh, take first on e8. But I, re I will uh, remarkably take here after you take this. Whichever way you take, I take the pawn on d2. And I'm up with material. So after bishop takes d3 by Alekhine. Heinrich Wolf played c takes d3. But this sets him up with a potential massive strategical problem. Problem? My name is Ben Tabler. <laughs> massive uh, positional problem with a bishop on b2. And, well, a former world champion is not going to let this opportunity slip away. He realizes that these pawns have to stay and eventually. We will set up uh, a5 on the queen side and we will block everything. Let's see how the game progressed. Alekhine took on e2, played queen f5, taking this pawn uh, and now taking it. Yeah, problem for white is, well, he, he can't defend the pawn. Maybe he should do it from g2 actually. No, but then this drops off, yeah, and this is also attacked. So he gives up the pawn on d5, but that's already the. Uh, very difficult. Okay, Heinrich went with uh, queen e4. Of course, we're not going to undouble these pawns because we want them exactly as they are. So queen e6 by by Alekhine. If the queen were to take here, we will enter here. But let's focus on the pattern that we're uh, uh, trying to learn here. f5, queen e5, and white went for the end game. But it's quite hopeless. Because he will be a piece down, as we'll soon see, and we know. f6, king f3, bring in the king. But it's all in vain. Rook d8, rook c1, and a5. So we have the pattern that we looked at in the skeleton. The only difference is that we have mirrored it. Instead of being on the king side, it's now on the queen side. So I try to advance his pawns on the king side. Bishop a3, but simply b6, and we know this pawn structure now. Blocking the bishop, it has nowhere to go, nothing to do. The entombed bishop stuck forever. And the next thing on the agenda for uh, Alekhine was simply to liquidate the pawns on the king's side. And win with this extra piece. King e6, f5 is coming, rook h8, bishop f8. Now we'll simply pick up this pawn with the rook. Now we'll play f5 at some stage, bishop e7, win this pawn, and then just march down the board with the f pawn and our extra piece. And meanwhile, uh, the best thing this can do is, uh, you know, I guess watch some nice movie, maybe Austin Powers. One million Austin Powers, yes! But that's all I can do. So that was Alexander Alekhine. And let's see some further examples of this a pattern. Another example. This time we have, well, it's from the black side again. Uh, Bosco Abramovic with the black pieces against Kennedy Sosonko, a very well-known grandmaster and editor for uh, for New and Chess. So here, in the middle game, black pushed the white knight back after a6, the knight went back to c3, and this allowed black to take on e3 with the knight. The knight takes d3. So now there's big pressure on the pawn on d5, which might have been what uh, white was banking on. But if you have been paying attention so far, you should be able to find black's next move, which was 
Yes, you got it. Pawn to e4. This gives up the pawn on d5, which was uh, taken. We have trades on d5. But what was Black's big idea with uh, e4? You know it, you know it already. h5. And toming the bishop. Boxing it in. So now, black will basically be a pawn up for the, uh, no, a bishop up for the rest of the game because the g2 bishop will not be a participant in this game. White played uh, rook to c1. White countered on the, the d file. We had a trade. Bishop d6, h3, trying to break free. That's why he played king f2 to protect, to protect this pawn. But we just fortify our chain and after g4 what do we play we play h4 stopping his king and burying the bishop forever b5 takes takes king f8 rook c4 king e7 and we're simply going to win this pawn and what's just what is just playing down a piece here at this point uh he realized okay black is just going to take here and he's just going to bring the rook here, 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 capture this pawn, and the b-pawn will queen. So he took on e4, sacrificing the bishop, but uh, the score sheet doesn't go any further, and I'm not sure if he flagged or resigned, but this game is over. Black can play rook g8, he can also play simply bishop g3, protecting this pawn, okay, king moves, and then we uh, just win this pawn. The white pawns will drop off like flies, and this guy will decide the game I have some more examples this next example is also uh, from the black side from black's point of view and since it's the late great uh, Vladimir Malinuk, I think it would be a disservice not to play this game from the start because he is one of the leading experts ever in this opening, the Leningrad Dutch, which is, yeah, this setup right here for black. So let's just quickly go over the opening. Yeah, one of the main experts in this line. This is the main line, queen e8. Black can also play c6. Uh, uh, knight c6, so at some stage eight, a5, but it goes with knight a6 here. Typical setup of the pieces for black. And in the middle game, we have some complications. After knight g4, white uh, attacks the knight with b4. And now e5, setting up huge complications. If white were to take this one, uh, we're taking here, attacking two pieces, winning a piece. So white uh, had a clever idea. He took on c6. And now if you take on c6, he will take on c5, and there's no longer, uh, he takes d4. But Malanyuk took on e3. F takes e3. And now he saved his own knight, so white has to do the same. And now, kaka, e4. Starting to hem in the bishop. Okay, the pawn on b4 is attacked, so white defended it. Black defended his pawn on b7. And let's just quickly see what happened here. Queen to d8, queen b3, h5. You should know the pattern by now. Knight b5, bishop takes. And as always, the side playing against the end-toned bishop will, will try to exchange pieces. Note that this looks like a clever move because we have an attack and an attack. But black has this check, which saves the day. So more trades. And yeah, I mean, black is uh, just busting up white here. Extra pawn, which will decide the day. In the end, uh, black actually uh, started picking up pawns. He picked up e3. And from there, he uh, also picked up e2. And actually won because of his two extra pawns and well he has a mating threat and 
will probably mate soon. So UT Meyer, a 24-70 rated player, resigned. Do we have more examples? Of course we do. It's a total co total coincidence that <laughs> most of these are from the black side, but this one, Bent Larsen, has the uh, black pieces. And, well, in this position, white, complicated position. If white moves the bishop, there's some, some e3 ideas. Uh, there's pressure here, pressure here. White decided to retreat the knight, but this allowed uh, Bent to take on e3. So, Borre Anderson with the white pieces against the legendary Dane, Bent Larsen. Now, some... Uh, some middle game play first, knight to a5, uh, pawn is attacked, trades, remember we, we like trades when we uh, when we have untomed the bishop, queen d7, cb, ab, so at the moment uh, we haven't finished uh, what we started here, setting up this chain here, but I'm sure that Lawson had that in mind, king f2, rook a6, so first it looks like he's going to initiate some play maybe on the queen side to try to attack some try and attack some weaknesses after bishop h3 he plays g6 and note that if white were to play h5 let's say here then we have like another version of uh, of a trap and the knight actually doesn't have a square even if it had a square we would play g4 next and even if the bishop could come back here it's still t going to be buried in by uh, the pawn on g4 so no h5, so rook c1, king g7, and here actually, ah, maybe Larsen might have missed a tactic here, rook takes c7, so if he takes, there's 96 check, so not smooth sailing, but good enough, queen takes d7, so even with this, this possible mistake, black is very close to setting up the decisive trap. So what do we play here? You got it, h5, closing the doors. This bishop isn't going anywhere. So white moves in with a check here, but all that black has to do now is to uh, rearrange his pieces. First he protects the uh, g6 pawn, brings his knight into the game. Now the knight can cover the pawn. So less valuable piece covering the pawn, and now we can start activating. And eventually white uh, lost the pawn on a4. And from there, black is simply going to mop up and win the game. So yeah, a very nice example. And our final example will be uh, a little bit more complicated, but let's check it out. So this example is actually uh, a bit more recent. It's from a 2018 tournament. And uh, Demchenko with the white pieces rated 2671 against uh, Tigran Garmian. A very strong grandmaster as well with 2622. And here white started a very, very uh, impressive plan. So we have Eco material, and this looks like it was from a uh, from a Sicilian. Let's maybe maybe back up a few moves and see when he took on e6. So we had this yeah typical Sicilian position. White has a uh, uh, marks of bind kind of pawn structure, but the pieces are a little funny. After knight d4, black can't really take here because of the pin coming up. So he played queen b6. And this allowed white to take on e6. There was a trade here. And we will soon reach the position we uh, wanted to look at. After g4, knight to e5. White unleashed a very nice idea. So he played c5 here. 
power sacrifice. And we're threatening to take here. Black can't allow that, so he took on c5. Now he has no problems with the pin here with bishop f4 because we will play knight d7. And we have two guys uh, on this, and then we can just unpin, move the rook and unpin. But the idea was deeper than that. White played uh, f4. Okay, the knight has to retreat. Now bishop c4. So white is down a pawn, attacking this pawn. And he does have the bishop pair, so black tries to hold down to the pawn. But now e5. And well, since we we are starting this pattern, we uh, we already know what's about to go down. Knight d7 was played. Knight to e4. There's still no rush after b5. Bishop to f1. Very calm. Knight to f7, and now g5. So this is very similar uh, to our pattern. Usually we have a pawn on h4, we could have that here, but it's even more powerful when we get g5 in. So from here the bishop is just completely, completely hemmed in. Uh, yeah, and white will basically use his extra piece now on the queen side. So uh, bishop d2, bishop a5, fortifying his, uh, his structure on the uh, king side, king e8, bishop h3, rook c6. And now white just uh, doubles. I mean, this doesn't matter. Hg, we just take, of course, with the eight pawn, keeping this formation intact. C4, and eventually white is going to win. Uh, win a pawn here, win some material. So in this position, black, uh, yeah, sort of panicked. I mean, what can you do? You, you can wait for the inevitable on the queen side. We will take the c pawn. We have the bishop pair, and we will simply penetrate the position. You even have a very bad king. So, so black tried to uh, sacrifice a piece here, but uh, it wasn't enough, and eventually black won. So, we saw this pattern of the Antone bishop, uh, a final recap, we have this bishop on d2 uh, from a fianchetto position where white has allowed black to take something on e3, uh, giving white these double pawns and after the move h5, this structure is very strong for black and yeah as we learned in the video if we can get a pawn here, this g pawn all the way over here, it's even better. So this structure will bury the bishop. There's no way out. The only way out for the bishop is to sacrifice uh, for two, two pawns, but usually that's not going to be enough because after you've done that, like in the uh, Sosonko example, you're going to be left with a uh, very bad pawn structure on the e-file. So even that will not be enough. So a very useful pattern uh, that hopefully you can apply in your games uh, I will soon have an analysis video where I uh, encounter this pattern and which was actually what led me to uh, do this pattern recognition video. If you like this video, I mean, please leave a thumbs up, some comments, share it if you uh, want to help me grow. And I will try to keep making these. My goal is to, uh, you know, make more instructional videos like this. I mean, I want to do current games like we're doing the World Championship match uh, at the time of recording. But I think these videos are where you will find value on my channel. And yeah, uh, but that's it for now. Pattern rec recognition number 11. And I hope to see you soon. Bye bye.